So we um, starting unit six on the Raspberry Pi after finishing several units on the Arduino. So um, the Raspberry Pi, you should all have one that looks similarly to this um, in a little plastic case, is a microcontroller. It has a processor, several ports, um, HDMI here for, for video power, the mini USB for power, connector here for um, a camera, USB, Ethernet, and a group of pins that we'll be able to use for LEDs and switches. Um, so this is called a GPIO, and we'll talk about that very soon. Uh, so what I want to do first is give you an idea of uh, the history of this uh, microcontroller, um, show you some of the features, compare it to previous versions, and actually a newer version. This is the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus that we're using um, in these units. Talk a little bit about um, Raspbian, the operating system. Um, I like to always compare the speed of new uh, computer system that I use, so uh, we're going to take a look at the speed of this particular device with the end queens algorithm, which we also use for the Arduino. And then we'll look at um, how we can figure out what the uh, IP address of this device is so that we can connect to it remotely. We're going to assume this is, we're going to be using it as a headless um, computer. Headless meaning there's no, no display and no uh, keyboard or mouse, so we only connect through it through um, uh, Wi-Fi um, or Ethernet cable. So headless computer. Uh, typical servers are typically headless computers. Um, and then remote connection. And then we'll have a mini lab at the end to play with the secure shell connection and the VNC connection. All right, so a little bit of history. This is a great photo of the prototype of the Raspberry Pi, and you can see that it, it looks very little like this device, but that's what the proof of concept is. It's putting together uh, devices and seeing is, is if what you believe is going to be a, a working system actually works. So um, this is a breadboard. It's slightly different from the breadboard that we've been using in this class. So call this, this part here a breadboard with the Arduino in this case. That's a breadboard, and this is also a breadboard. And here the connections are soldered on the other side. And you can recognize, for those of you who have taken the circuits class um, at Smith College, these are um, circuits similar to the circuits we've been using um, in the first half of the semester. And then nicely organized wires here. We see that there's a battery. Some resistors, we recognize resistors. There's a crystal here to make the uh, processor work at a particular speed, and then some, some connectors. And the person who put this together is uh, Eben Upton, British, um, working at Cambridge. And he built that prototype in 2006, so 14 years ago from 2020, which is when I'm recording this. Um, it was revealed online in 2011, and it was wildly successful and wildly um, accepted, and, and people really were interested in it. There were 600,000 views in two days on YouTube uh, right after it was presented. And um, there's a video, the, the, the next slide will show you a video that I'm going to ask you to watch. Uh, he was director of studies at the University of Cambridge, and, and his um, reason for putting this together is that he designed it to rekindle the curiosity about computing in a, generated, in a generation immersed in technology, but in but indifferent to how it worked. So he, his, his main reason was to design uh, this system to rekindle the curiosity about computing in a generation immersed in technology, but indifferent to how it worked. So um, interestingly enough, in the 70s, when the personal computers came about, there was a huge interest in building computers and putting them together. Um, and then that kind of disappeared, and he was interested in rekindling that, and that really have, has worked. And the Arduino, the popularity of the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi, and there's several others available as well, has really um, filled a niche here. People were really interested in, in actually going back to, um, to playing with hardware, and, and uh, this is an example. So that's the video that I'm gonna, that's the video I'm gonna ask you to watch. Uh, there's a, a, a link here, 
I'm going to put uh, a link on uh, the class page. Very um, good introduction. It's not very long, three minutes, and um, it's worth um, watching. All right, what are the features of our um, model? So that's the Raspberry Pi Model B. Um, it's a 1.2 gigahertz processor, and you, it is compa compared to different models, and that's, uh, that's the uh, original one, then Pi 2, Pi 0. By the way, Pi 0 is a, it's a smaller kind of br brother or sister of the Raspberry Pi. That's a, the, the one we use in class, and the 0 is smaller. This is an adapter here, because the HDMI is definitely smaller than the HDMI that you have here, so you need some kind of adapter if you have a regular HDMI connector. Um, that's its little case. I've put it in the case. This is a camera module for it. Um, and it, it's really inexpensive, $5 for that, with, without the case. So it's a quad-core. The processor is a quad-core. It means that really actually have four different processors on the chip. The chip is the one that is under the, uh, the fins right, right there the little um, uh, heat sink that is on top. So four processors, um, which means that you can use you know, f different processors for doing different kinds of computation, you know, keeping track of maybe some computation doing parallel progr programming if, if wanted. One, one gigabyte of RAM, very different from uh, what we saw with the Arduino. Um, it has a wireless LAN, 2.5 gigahertz, and this is important for us because we uh, just discovering that it doesn't support 5G, which some of you have, so we're going to have to play around with that in order to connect to uh, 2.4 gigahertz Ethernet. The GPIO, that's this guy here. This pins, general purpose input output. Um, four USB ports, so quite a few, so you can connect a, a keyboard, a mouse, and other uh, other devices, a thumb drive if you want, things like this. Um, stereo output for sound, uh, HDMI, full-size HDMI, so we can really connect that tiny little computer to a big, a big screen. Um, camera, there's a module, there's a connector for a camera, and, um, and a micro SD port, so that's the um, place, oh, I don't have a, a macro SD card, but right here, that's where the SD card goes. So um, the SD card, once it's in there, is really it acts as the hard disk of the Raspberry Pi. So uh, a Raspberry Pi would not work without an SD card. So if you have an SD card, what you do with it is you plug it in there, and then you leave it there. You never really remove it. Um, and it has a, a USB connection for power. It's a micro USB. So that's the one that is next to the HDMI. So it is also USB, but it's used only for powering the Pi. And we saw with the Arduino that the USB carries 5 volt. So there's a ground and 5 volt. And that's how the Pi gets its power, through the uh, connection uh, here, through the connection uh, right there. Um, so that's a comparison of the Pi that we have, this, this guy, to the newer one. Just it's interesting to see what the, the differences are. Um, first one I'm going to notice is that the new Pi works at a higher frequency than the old one, 1 1.5 instead of 1.4 gigahertz. So that means the instructions, the cycle time for the instructions is going to be that much um, shorter, so it's going to execute more instructions per second. So it should, in principle, go a little faster. It's a different processor. It's a Broadcom, uh, slightly different, and I'm expecting it to be maybe more efficient. It also has quad core, so actually four processors on that uh, chip. Uh, video is going to work at a higher frequency, so we're going to be able to play games a little better, have a better resolution. Um, and, and have more windows. RAM is typically one gigabyte, but you can boost it with the four to four gigabyte, which is not bad. Typical laptops have eight to 16 gigabyte, but four is not bad. You can really put a lot of uh, open programs uh, in there. Two USBs instead of four for RPI. Um, two micro uh, HDMI plug, when, whereas we only have one, and that's a micro HDMI, so it's the same 
as on the Pi Zero. Ethernet also um, uh, and Wi-Fi. And then uh, the same GPIO. So that's important. You, you see that all these um, Raspberry Pi have a, a GPIO of 40 pins because uh, the, the, the type of connections that you want to, to make is going to be fairly standard from one to the other. You want to attach the same kind of hardware. And if you've already built something and you want to upgrade, then you want the connection to be to be um, pin to pin to compatible. So you're going to get that 40 pin in all cases. So our processor is a quad-core processor, 1.2 uh, gigahertz. It supports floating point operations, wh whereas the Arduino doesn't, um, but it does it in, in, in software. So it means that we can do things that are definitely more sophisticated with the Raspberry Pi in terms of scientific computation and dealing with, uh, with floats. Uh, it supports virtualization in hardware. Virtualization allows you to have virtual servers, so you could create, if you wanted, several servers on the Raspberry Pi, and they would be independent of each other. They would believe that they can have the only one using the hardware, but actually it could be several, so these are the virtual um, servers, and that's, that's quite nice. We're not going to use it here, but this is a nice feature. It has 31 general purpose registers, uh, very likely 32 with one that is not accessible to the programmer. Um, and a hardware-assisted cryptography. So what we see here is that the people who put together the Raspberry Pi um, understood that there's a need for doing very fast cryptography in hardware, and having a small device able to do that could be useful in some, some applications when you want high-level security. So um, that's a feature that was put there because of the need for cryptography um, in today's um, applications. Um, that's a block diagram of our Raspberry Pi. So that's the general purpose um, input-output, GPIO. This is important. 3.3 volts. The whole um, uh, Raspberry Pi works at 3.3 volts. That's the, 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 the voltage at which it operates. It gets, however, it gets 5 volts from the charger. So USB charger provides 5 volts, but that 5 volts, see the, the, the edge of converter, the converter on board changes 5 volts to 3.3, and everything here works at 3.3 volts. So it's going to be important when you're going to connect, you're going to want to connect um, hardware sensors that normally work with 5 volt to a Raspberry Pi, which has only, its signals are going to go from 0 to 3.3. Whereas a device that, that is supposed to work with 5 volts expects a high level to be 5 volts and a low level to be 0. So <clears throat> that's going to create some interesting challenges, not necessarily always. And with a, a quick reference to the project, I'm going to um, mention um, how we're going to connect a, a Raspberry Pi to an Arduino for our project, and the difference in voltages has to be addressed. But um, so here we see our. Um, our processor, and then there's the one gigabyte of RAM. This is our Wi-Fi right here, and you um, Ethernet, and then our four USBs, and that's the Ethernet cable here, which is one option to connect to the Pi. If you if your Wi-Fi doesn't doesn't seem to work. Connecting the Wi-Fi, the, the Raspberry Pi to your Wi-Fi router is also an option, and then you can connect to that by SSHing or VNC, using the VNC client to connect to um, your Pi. All right. So um, unboxing. So <clears throat> this is done. I have a separate video for putting together the Pi, so I'm going to skip that. Normally it would go in these slides, but for um, today. I'm going to skip that and talk a little bit about Raspbian. Um, before going there, and I'm going, to, I'm going to repeat that very often because it's important, your Raspberry Pi is a computer, and it's a pretty sophisticated computer, much more so than the Arduino was, and in particular the SD card acts as a, a, a hard disk for your computer which means that your, the operating system, the Raspbian operating system, is going to constantly be reading, writing files to the, the, the hard disk. And 
usually an operating system is not constantly going to write to disk. It's going to put things in memory in RAM for a while, and then when it sees that no, nothing is going on in the computer, that there's some kind of idle time, it's going to take whatever is in memory and write it to disk. So things that you think are going to be written to disk sometimes are in memory, and they haven't been written to disk yet. If you just disconnect your, your Raspberry Pi by removing the plug, the charger, you risk losing information that hadn't been written to disk. So what you want to do instead, you want to um, issue a command to actually turn off the Pi, but in the software command. So we'll see there's two different places to do that. And so option one, uh, actually I'm going to start here. When you connected using SSH, which hopefully all of you will have done already, then the command to uh, turn off the Pi is sudo Alt minus P. sudo to become super user because that's a command that you don't want regular users to be able to issue on a computer. So sudo allows you to, um, SU stands for super user. So super user do halt, which is the, the command for, for stopping and P shut down. That's what you want to do before you turn off a pipe when you work uh, with SSH. We're going to see that you can also connect with VNC, which allows you to have a menu and a desktop and all these kind of nice features that a desktop offers. And if you do so, there's a shutdown uh, option at the very top left, that little raspberry. If you click on it, then you have this main menu. And shutdown has three options to log out, to reboot, or to shut down. And that's how you would um, you pick shut down, that's how you would stop. So remember to always shut down either sudo halt p or shut down from here before you disconnect it or turn off um, the power. Okay, so Raspbian is um, an operating system the same way that um, uh, Apple Mac OS is an operating system, the same way that Windows is an operating system, Linux is an operating system, Raspbian is an operating system. Uh, it has a graphical desktop which is shown here that you can access. Um, and there's some, um, some ways of configuring the, the environment. And we'll look at that very soon. Uh, this command, sudo raspi-config. But um, so Raspbian is an operat operating system. It's free. Um, it is great. We can download it for free. And the name comes from Raspberry Pi and Debian. Debian is a, a version of, of Linux. Um, the same that uh, Red Hat and Ubuntu are versions of, of Linux. Debian is, a, is one as well. Uh, so the base, the core of, of that is Linux, Linux kernel, which is common to all the different ver versions of Linux. And then there's some um, customization that, has, that makes it particular, and that's the Debian part. Um, <clears throat> there were 35,000 package, packages available for it a, a year or so ago, and it's going to be more now. Uh, it's not affiliated with the Raspberry Pi Foundation, which is a foundation that is in charge of the Raspberry Pi um, as an ecosystem, but uh, it's not part of it, but it's available, it's been recognized, and it's, it's recommended as one operating system. There's several different things. And you can, um, you can go to the raspbian.org, uh, website to um, to actually access it and download it. So how would you, if you didn't have it already on the SD card that I've sent you, how would you uh, install it? So the, the steps are typical, the standard, you download Raspbian from this website, it comes as a zip file, you unzip it, and then you write it to the micro uh, SD card. And here is an example here. Um, there are often these kind of empty, um, bigger uh, SD cards that have a little slot here, so you can take this and put it in there, and now your card has a bigger factor, and some laptop, like my older Mac uh, laptop, has a little slot on the side, and that's how I can insert uh, the micro SD card through this adapter, and I can program it with the operating system. And so, um, there's if you have a Windows machine, Win32 Win Disk Imager is a application that allows you to write to SD cards, on a Mac, DD can be used, um, disk, um, it's, it's a disk writer, um, <clears throat> allows you to write information to a, a device. Uh, and then you can, once it's been programmed, you eject it from your uh, laptop, and you plug it, in, direct, plug it directly into your Raspberry, and then you can turn on the Raspberry. 
So that's the typical way. It's all this is going to take a long time. So if you ever have to recreate an SD card for some reason, or if you want to update it and play with a different version, then you're going to have to go back through downloading it, which is going to take a long time. So that's that the clock here, maybe 10, 15 minutes of download, maybe more. Unzipping is pretty fast, but writing the disk image can be half hour long, uh, and sometimes more depending on the size of your SD card. <clears throat> so it, it's, a, it's a long process. So there's a very good um, handbook uh, from the, um, for on Debian, and um, the uh, AppGate is, a, is an app that we're going to be using. Um, to install software on um, our uh, Raspberry Pi. This handbook here, this link, is very good and, and will in, um, introduce you and co cover a lot of interesting uh, things for your for Raspberry Pi. Okay, web server. So these are chap section 6.2, chapter 8, section 8.4, chapter 9, and section 11.2 are good uh, references for you. Uh, and as well, Lindas, if you have access to Linda, um, Lindas, which is now part of, um, has been acquired by LinkedIn, um, and in the learning environment, then um, Raspbian is uh, a very nice tutorial as well. Okay, so now this is a good time for you to take a little break before uh, I continue, and I invite you to have some coffee, and here is a picture I took uh, when I was in Paris a while back. I'm going to teach you a little bit of French culture. This is called a café gourmand. And gourmand in French means somebody who has a sweet tooth. So a café gourmand. So typically at the end of a dinner or at the end of a lunch, you have just a coffee, which is an espresso right here. But if you uh, still have room for some more food and you have a sweet tooth, you can ask for a café gourmand. And it's usually a surprise. You don't necessarily know what's going to come with the café gourmand. And it's up to the restaurant to decide what they're going to add to, to your coffee. So here I have a little crème brûlée, and I have uh, some fresh strawberries and um, coffee ice cream. Uh, sometimes you, you may have three, four, more, five different tiny, so they're the small sizes, uh, tiny little uh, dishes, but sweet, typically sweet dishes, uh, sometimes less, and um, so it's a surprise. So. Um, Time for you to have some coffee, and if and if you want it to be gourmand, you know where to look. All right, we're going to continue our um, exploration. So um, the first way to connect to the Pi, and I've asked everybody in the class to do that, is to SSH. So let's play with that ourselves. I'm going to connect to my terminal. Here's my terminal, and I'm already connected, so I'm going to exit, and I'm going to connect back. So this is my command, my pi is 270a, and I'm going to connect. Now, once I've connected once, it doesn't ask me to, uh, it doesn't display anything except this. All right. So now I'm connected, clear, to clear everything, I'm going to make this window a little bigger so we can all see better what's going on. And that's it. If I do an ls, I'm going to have a list of um, the different files that I have. So, um, so if I do an ls, I'm going to see the files that I have here. Um, and typically, the only um, so pretty much everything is standard. There's there's nothing in documents, and there's nothing in different um, uh, different folders, directories. But that that's okay. So that's the way I'm going to connect. So clear to clear ls to less cd to change directory. So if I want to go into public, for example, cd public. So there's nothing there. Come back. All right. So typical. Linux commands will work here, Linux that we have learned in the assembly class, those of you who have taken that class before. So that's that. And so how fast is it? So now it's time to play with the N Queens algorithm. Um, so we know what the algorithm is. I'm trying to put N Queens on an N by N chessboard. Typically 8 by 8, but we can make it 9 by 9, 10 by 10. So what I'm going to have to do is to download. So I have the uh, information here. I have a C version 
of the Queen's uh, algorithm, and it is at this URL here. <clears throat> so I'm going to um, copy paste this and go back here. So uh, that URL should be available on the class web page. So look for there if you don't want to type it and just want to copy paste it. So here, one thing that I can do, I know that I've done this command before, so I'm going to look for the command in the history, and I'm going to look for, with grep, um, wget, which is a command that I've, um, that, that is part of the Linux operating system. W means web, and get, get, get something from the web. And I have, let me make this window bigger. Queen's demo C is in my account, on the science server at Smith College, and this command 82 will get it and download it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a directory for me, I'm going to call it 270 because that's the CSC 270 class at Smith College, CD 270, and I'm going to, I want to repeat this command, which is command number 82, so I can just say 82 with an exclamation mark in front of it, and it's going to download this program. It's resolving the address. It didn't know where www.soundsmith.edu was, so it took a few seconds, and then it downs, downloads it. So if I do an ls now, here it is. So I can, I can um, compile it, gcc, uh, output queen's demo, queen's demo c. So minus o means output in, so that's going to be the executable, and that's the name of my C program. Okay, it's compiled. If I do an ls, now I have two files, and, and uh, Raspbian shows me the executable in green. So I can say Queen's demo, run it, and this program tells me what it's expecting. So I, it, it expects n, a number, n is the size of the chessboard. All right, so if that's the way you want it, I'm going to say, well, what try to solve uh, the n queens algorithm for a chessboard that is 15 by 15. All right, it has found a solution, so it displays the solution. Put the queen on row zero, column zero, and then row one, column two, and then row two, column four, and so on. It took four milliseconds. All right, so that's um, that's quite that's quite nice, um, and so I can compare that to what I know get it, uh, and these are the different times it took. So 15, you see, on a MacBook Pro, 17 milliseconds, 2009 MacBook Pro, 17 milliseconds, and I was getting 4 milliseconds. So you see that this Raspberry Pi is quite good, just the computing power. So I'm not testing the, the speed of the disk, I'm not testing the speed of the network, uh, I'm just, or the, the RAM, I'm just testing the, the, the processor speed, kind of the raw processor speed there. That's my benchmark. So, 4 milliseconds, let's go back here. <clears throat> so, 1 millisecond laptop 1. Sorry. So, it's quite good. It's, uh, it's in between this and the other system for 15. Let's see. Two, two was better. Mac, the, the, the MacBook Pro 2014 was better. Roughly MacBook Pro 2009. Or Mac Pro 2009, five, 5 milliseconds. If I want to test several different numbers, so you see here what I'm, I would be expecting you to do would be to try all these different numbers and put the, put the result here in millisecond. I'm going to show you how we can do that, and, and most of you should remember how to do that. I can run a loop in Bash, so um, I'm going to clear this. For i in, I want 15, 16, oops, 16, 17, 18, 19, and, and there's a command sec, sequence, to do that automatically. Um, but I'm going to just do these numbers. Uh, for i in these, do what? Run queen's demo and pass it i, which is my variable. But then it's going to output three different lines, and I'm interested only in the millisecond. So I'm going to pipe that through grep and say, look, just for the MS, the line that contains MS. There should be only one of them. And then we're done. 
And so now I see 15 by 15, 4 milliseconds, 16 by 16, 27. We see that it's not linear. We've seen that before. That algorithm, depending on the size, may take more time on the smaller board than on the bigger board just because of the property of the algorithm. So anyway, so now I can compare that and, and see that it's quite nice. Not as nice as current laptops, but much better than uh, the Arduino. All right. So uh, I have an example of this with that for loop here in case um, you wanted to have a copy of that. So internet address, how would I find the internet address of my Raspberry Pi? Well, in the terminal, if you type, whoops, in terminal, if you if you type sbin if config, it will tell you. So let's do that. Demos are, are good. sbin if config interface config. All right. So there's a, a, a long output. So Ethernet zero. That's the cable. Right now, I'm not connected through a cable, so um, there's no connection. WLAN WLAN zero. That's the Wi-Fi network. And I'm connected, and my address is 192.168.117. And that's my, um, my IP address. And that's the one that dindns.org is going to have associated with my host name. And that's what that slide shows. The dindns address will be, will associate 270, in my case, I'm A, for you it will be a different letter, 270x is a geek.net will be associated with 192.168.1, and for in my case, 17. Um, so remote connection. So we've just seen SSH. For those of you who are using Windows, Putty is a good um, software, but there's others that will allow you to SSH, and you've probably used that before in classes at Smith College. OK, here it is, BNC Viewer. So um, I have created a connection, but if uh, I hadn't, let's see, can I, I, let me show you how to go about this. File, new connection, VNC server, it's 270a dot is a geek dot net. The name, so that's the name that I want to, um, to see in my window as possible connection. I'm going to call it demo 270. Uh, nothing in here. Encryption, I'll let the VNC server choose. So I'm going to press OK. And here is demo 270. So I'm going to click on this. Connecting. All right. So it's asking me for a username. It's always pi. And then the password that you know. Remember the password so that I don't have to retype it. And that's it. Press OK. Connecting to the Raspberry Pi. It's going to take a little bit of time because it's transferring a lot of pixels. And here we are. Good. So that's my environment. I can make this maybe the whole window so that um, give access. Would like. Uh, okay. I'm not going to do that. So here I have my window. This you'll recognize the Greco gates at Smith College. And I have a menu here with different things going on. And you'll see there's plenty of programs and apps that have already been installed, all available here. Preferences, add, remove software. We'll see that we do, we're going to do that ourselves from the terminal. And talking about the terminal, there's one right here. And I can talk to this guy directly from its terminal. Instead of using my terminal and SSHing to it, I can be right there and opening up a terminal window. So if I do ls, cd270, I have my Queen's demo. So now I'm working in a terminal that is on my Pi, not the terminal window on my laptop. And I can run it, Queen's demo. Uh, 25. All right, 134 milliseconds. Some of these actually were taking minutes, close to hours on the Arduino. Um, some of these numbers. Um, all right, so that's the, the connection. I can exit from here. 
and um, here and so now you you want to keep your pie on unless you're going to be done for the day and you know that you're not going to come back to it in two days then you will turn it off if that were the case then you could go here and go to shut down and there's three options and you would pick shut down, shut down. Um, but here if I just want to stop the VNC viewer quit VNC viewer and that's it I'm back to this window and this is the demo that I created today and now that I've um, registered my uh, user account pi and my password I can just click here and it should go in directly without asking me for anything so it's a nice way to uh, connect okay so we've done um, everything that I wanted to do in this unit and now it's time for a uh, mini lab and this will be a separate session um, which we'll do um, together but um, in class